Okay, the Laplace transform of e to the alpha t. Well, we just write it out. Okay, we use e to the alpha t for our f of t function. <coughs> and we get this. And then the laws of exponents tell us that that's just e to the alpha minus s times t. And the antiderivative of e to the alpha minus s times t is e to the alpha minus s times t divided by alpha minus s, very straightforward. Evaluated at infinity and zero, we get, well, at infinity, um, s being our variable, I'm sorry, uh, t being our variable, we get zero provided, provided what? Provided s is bigger than alpha, okay? Uh, so we didn't put that in here, but that's necessary. So um, uh, for s greater than alpha, we're going to get zero. Um, and of course, well, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, that means that alpha minus s is going to be positive. So, um, at evaluating at zero, of course, our numerator is zero. So we have minus one over alpha minus s. Okay. Uh, and zero minus this gives us this gives us this. So that's our Laplace transform of e to the alpha t. But it's only defined for s bigger than alpha, whatever alpha is. Okay, uh, plus transform of the cosine of alpha t, well, we just do the integral. It's very straightforward, reasonably straightforward, first year calculus, integral. Uh, cosine of alpha t, e to the negative s t dt, we do an integration by parts. Uh, we're generally, more often than not, going to let dv equal e to the negative s t dt, so that v is negative 1 over s e to the negative s t, and then we're going to let u be whatever function we're doing the transform of, in this case, cosine of alpha t, so the du is negative alpha sine of alpha t. Now, keeping the signs straight, you see I wrote down a couple of incorrect signs there, but I think I have them right now. Um, our v du, uh, I'm sorry, our uv, uv here is going to be this. Evaluate it between zero and infinity. At infinity, e to the negative st is going to be zero. Uh, at evaluated at zero, we're going to have a negative 1 over s because, of course, the exponential of zero is zero, the cosine of zero uh, is one, sorry, the cosine of zero is one. So we're going to have a negative 1 over s, uh, but we're going to be subtracting that because it's a lower limit, so we're going to get a 1 over s out of that. Okay, then we've got to do uh, the integral of v du. Now the v has a negative 1 over s, the du has a negative alpha, which gives you a plus alpha over s, but it's minus the integral of v du, so we have a minus there. And then we just have our sine and our exponential. Okay. Then, proceeding to another step, we do the integration by parts on the sine function. and. Um, looking at what I've got. Now the part inside the parentheses, and let's emphasize that because it looked a little weird to me and probably looks that way to you. Uh, we got the negative alpha over s times everything we get when we do the integration by parts on the sine of alpha t. And this evaluated at infinity because of the e to the negative s t is going to give us zero. And evaluated at zero, the sine gives us zero because we have a sine of zero. So uh, this term is going to give us negative alpha over s times this. It's going to be negative alpha over s times zero. But then we're going to have a negative alpha squared over s squared distributing through by the uh, multiplication by the negative alpha over s times the integral of e to the negative s t cosine of alpha t dt. Uh, but at this point,
this is a multiple of the thing that we're trying to integrate. So we add this term to both sides where this is one side and this is the other. And we get uh, 1 plus alpha squared over s squared. And I was careless uh, not having a great day today. I uh, feel pretty good now, but, uh, you know, just a lot of little mistakes like that. Okay, so uh, we have this multiplied by this integral equals 1 over s. So this integral is what? It's 1 over s divided by this. What's this? This is, well, common denominator is s squared plus alpha squared over s squared. So that means we're going to um, multiply both sides by the reciprocal, which will be s squared over s squared plus alpha squared. Now the s squared uh, got really garbled here, so we really have a hard time seeing that. But if we move over here, uh, actually thought that I had done this. Well, anyhow, what we, have, what we have here, if we just do the algebra, is we get S over S squared plus alpha squared. And that's our Laplace transform of the cosine of alpha t. And I see another parenthesis I didn't bother with. Okay. Again, pretty straightforward. Now you can do the same thing for the sine of alpha t. You get the formula for that. Um, and you have a table of these formulas in your textbook. So you have them to refer to, but this is how they're derived, and you should be able to derive many of those formulas. Uh, now we want to move on and talk about inverse transforms. Somehow I thought I'd rewritten this over here, but I, appear that I it appears that I didn't. So. We'll stop here and then we'll move on.